Good morning and welcome to Wednesday morning prayer. I thought for a minute I could hear a hen outside because they're crowing. The wind must have knocked the gate down. It's been really gale force here, so I hope wherever you are that you're safe this morning. And it's good morning to our dear Jan who's logged in. And those who've not logged in, welcome. This morning we light this light and we dedicate it to God to say thank you for this beautiful earth, for the creation of this sacred earth, the Cathedral of God, and for the animal kingdom. And we pray especially for those who work for the sacred earth and who work on the earth, our farmers and the many migrants who come over to help with the the various jobs that need doing, the crops, the flowers, the plants. So let us just be still as we gather in this place and we give thanks to a loving God, a Father Mother God, who provides for us each and every waking moment of our life. Amen. So we begin this morning with the prologue for the Wednesday morning communions and we read, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Wednesday morning, we commune with the angel of the sun, saying, Angel of the sun, enter my solar center and give the fire of life to my entire body. As these words are spoken, you contemplate the rising sun and experience the accumulated solar energies radiating through your solar center located at the solar plexus, sending healing life force energies through your entire body. So let us just stop and just come into the Cathedral of God, the landscape. And as we welcome Brother Sun and the Angel of the Sun, we stand in their glorious healing rays. And with every in-breath we breathe in, we are breathing in the healing rays of Brother Sun. Just be still and relax. And our opening prayer from my owner reads, It was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully made fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's verse 13 and 14 from Psalm 139. And the opening prayer is also a prayer of thanksgiving. O sun behind all suns, we give you greeting this new day. Let all creation praise you. Let the daylight and the shadows praise you. Let the fertile earth and the swelling sea praise you. Let the winds and the rain, the lightning and the thunder praise you. Let all that breeds, both male and female, praise you. And I shall praise you, O God of all life. I give you greeting this day. And yes, you're right. There's a hen outside. <laughs> wow. Amen. I wonder how she got out. Our next reading is from the little booklet, the UCB. When you see the signs of adolescence in your child, it's time to talk with them. As a parent of a preteen, of a preteen, you ask your task is similar to that of a football coach who's trained his team all through the late summer and early autumn. Now the first game is about to occur when direct coaching is not going to be possible. 
So the coach gathers the players in the locker room and makes one last speech before they take the field. He reminds them again of the fundamentals of the game and gives them the old pep talk about winning. Similarly, as the parent of a preteen, you've been teaching them through preschool and primary years about right and wrong, what to believe and how to behave. Now the big contest called adolescence is about to begin and your team will take the field. From that point forward, very little parental advice can be given. A Christian psychologist recommends that parents take an 11 or 12 year old child on a preparing for adolescence trip, during which moral values and family principles are repeated and emphasized. Sex education and the physical changes of adolescence, the approaching social pressures and other fundamentals that should be discussed. And when you've done all this, you've two things left to do. One, assure them you love them and will always be there for them and that will never change. And secondly, pray for them every day and don't just pray, have confidence in the power of your prayer. The, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wondrous results. So for those families who are the parents of preteen children, I pray that that reading is of help. And now we come to our prayers for peace. And these beautiful prayers come from the world's faiths. And this morning we read a section titled The Despised. And we begin with a quote from Psalm 102 verse 17. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. And from our Muslim brothers and sisters we read, O mankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that ye may know each other, not that ye may despise each other. And from the Christian tradition we read, we pray for a living awareness of people's value, a strengthening resolve to choose negotiation rather than force in our dealings with nations and individuals. Respect. Respect for ideas and opinions which cut across our own and those who reach out across social, political or religious barriers. And real desire to learn and to share. And blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. From our Jewish brothers and sisters we read, Lord of peace, be with those who guide the destinies of the world, so that an end may come to boasting and vainglory, and the reign of arrogance dwindle in our time, so that we may stand upright freed from the burden of fear and the weight of suspicion, learning to trust each other. That's a lovely prayer. And now we come to another reading, and it's from Psalms now. And as we open the book, ah, Psalm 16. Sustain me, O God, for I am anchoring my faith in you. I say it again, you are my Lord. When I am estranged from you, I have nothing that is of any real worth. The significant and contributive people of this world are those who know you. They are the individuals I must respect. Those who make lesser things their ultimate concern are investing in eventual trouble and grief. I cannot worship their idols or respect their objectives. 
I have chosen to make God my ultimate concern. He is the pilot of my ship. Thus the course before me will lead to ultimate fulfillment. I am guaranteed an inheritance of infinite value. I look to God as my chief counselor, even in the darkest of night. He is ready to teach and guide me. I need only to recognize his perpetual presence. Because he continually surrounds me, I shall not lose my way. Is it any wonder that I am happy? Even my humanity, my tangible body, rests in the blessed realization of this security. He will keep even my human self from the destructive clutch of evil. You do show me the paths I must take. Within your all-embracing presence, there is genuine fulfillment. In my relationship with you, I discover incomparable and eternal joy. Amen. And now, my dear friends, we come to an important part of our morning prayer. Excuse me, I've got an itchy nose. And that's our intercessions. And now we call on the Spirit of the Living God to come on each one of us as we prepare to open our heart in the presence of Christ and share with the Lord whatever may be troubling us this new day. So let us just be still for a moment as we gather our thoughts and our feelings, our wishes, our hopes and dreams, and we bring them to the Lord. God is love. He who dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. In Jesus Christ we see how God loves us. Let us renew our faith in love today. You have given us life and light this morning. Let us give thanks for the gifts from your sacred hands. You are sole master of the future. Keep us from despair and fear of what is to come. Love has no ambition to seek anything for itself. Strengthen our will to give up selfishness today. And may your love in us overcome all things, that there be no limit to our faith, our hope, and our endurance. And from the little book of Celtic prayers, there are a few intercessions also. There is no plant in the ground but tells of your beauty, O Christ. There is no creature on the earth, there is no life in the sea, but proclaims your goodness. There is no bird on the wing, there is no star in the sky. There is nothing beneath the sun but is full of your blessing. Lighten my understanding of your presence all around, O Christ. Kindle my will to be caring for creation today. And now we pray for this coming day and for the care of our sacred earth. <clears throat> and this morning, when we began our morning prayer, we dedicated it for the Cathedral of God, this sacred earth for all who work in it, for all who care for it, and for the many who respect it. But we remember those who abuse it, who use it as a dumping ground. And for those who destroy our trees and the forests of the Creator's garden, which has a dreadful negative impact on climate change. And with our dear Jan, we hold all gathered here, the many on our intentions book lists, too many to mention, but we bring them all to the Lord this morning. We pray, yes, of course, for peace within and peace without. For each one of you gathered here this morning and for the many who will watch this live recording at a later time. 
We pray for our dear brothers Skip and Thomas Aquinas Q and all our friends on Google Hangouts. We remember our friends on LinkedIn, on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook. But I also remember Brother Brian, who's a trucker in America, who has expressed a desire to join the community. And he is a beautiful man, a man who is full of integrity and love. So we pray that the Lord will guide our dear brother in America and all those who are seeking an alternative way of living a simple life from their own home. We pray for all the members of our community who are poorly today, for dear sister Elsie who's recovering from pneumonia and who's been very ill. We pray for Eleanor and Elizabeth, for dear Miriam in New Zealand. We pray for Heather who's having problems with her father who's become quite cantankerous and difficult to live with. We pray for the many who've come and gone, for Tom, Joy, Pam and Richard. We remember dear Sue and Lisa and Sheila, and we give thanks to God for the gifts that they brought to us. And we remember dear sister Pamela in California, who's still in the indecisive stage, for brother Paul, and our Franciscan hermits in America. And now let us be still. Let us be still in and know that God is with us, that God is present, and that God hears our heartbeat and every prayer of the heart. conclude with the blessing Do you know I don't think I've said the Lord's Prayer forgive me how oh, naughty I guess the hen outside it and the wind is a distraction so it may a culpa our Father Mother God hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here our daily bread of insight. Forgive us our foibles, our trespasses, our disobedience. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the forces of evil, negativity, and despair. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And now we can comfortably conclude with our closing prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Bless to us, O God, our soul that comes from on high. Bless to us, O God, our body that is of earth. Bless to us, O God, each thing my eye sees, each sound my ear hears. Bless to us, O God, each scent that goes to our nostrils, each taste that goes to our lips, each ray that guides our way. And as I come to blow out this simple votive lamp light, I thank the Lord Jesus in the presence of all the great ascended masters in the presence of the world's leading spiritual teachers, with the angelic realm and all the holy men and women of God of all faiths who've gone before us to touch your heart this day. And if you're living here in the United Kingdom where we're being battered by this storm coming from the Arctic, we ask God's protection on you today. Amen. So that's morning prayer, dear friends, and I look forward to your company again this evening. I wish you a blessed sleep if it's your bedtime, but if it's your day and you've got to go out, my, my advice to you from my heart 
is please drive carefully because Brother Rob left here at seven this morning to resume his duties as a police chaplain in Preston and the roads and the winds were horrendous. So drive carefully till we meet again. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Paxet Bonum Om Shanti, Solo di Carita, Salam Alaikum, and the peace of all that is sacred to you, reawaken in your heart that you are a beloved of God.